Breaking news John McCain did it again. He needs to go now. The biggest traitor in Washington, D.C., might be none other than Senator John McCain. Disturbing information continues to emerge about his direct ties to Muslim terrorists and the London bomber, and how he's owned and funded by Saudi terrorists and George Soros. Ever since Trump got into office, McCain has done everything in his power to subvert the President of the United States, which is a federal crime. As McCain continues to garner the sympathy of many Americans who still falsely believe he's a Vietnam War hero, it's time that we finally set the record straight about the unbelievable things McCain did during his time in the military, before McCain's eyes and nauseating tributes are made about his service in Vietnam. It's important to note that due to McCain's familial ties to high-ranking naval commanders during his time in service, his father and grandfather were both four-star admirals. The majority of McCain's massive catastrophes and scandals in the Navy were completely buried, and his military records sealed. We reported several weeks ago how John McCain was solely responsible for the horrifying atrocity aboard the USS Forrestal aircraft carrier on July 31, 1967, where McCain's cocky maneuver of doing a wit start of his plane would go on to kill 134 sailors, in the deadliest loss of life the Navy has ever seen. But because of McCain's daddy being a four-star admiral, the entire incident was buried, and the Navy never officially put blame on anyone for the tragedy. Astonishingly, McCain would not only be allowed to continue serving in the Navy, but would go on to be responsible for the deaths of numerous other men, in a scandal that has been successfully buried for decades. Three months after the bloody tragedy on the USS Forrestal aircraft carrier, John McCain was sent on a bombing mission over Hanoi in October of 1967 when he was shot down and captured by the North Vietnamese, where he's go on to be a prisoner of war until 1973. After being released from captivity, McCain would use his POW story and veteran status to rise to political prominence, where his image as a Vietnam War hero would go on to propel him to be elected as a United States Senator. But a hero is the last thing that John McCain was or will ever be. What most people don't know is the massive government scandal that McCain helped hide, as he'd go on for decades to tirelessly work to bury stunning information about American prisoners over in Vietnam who, unlike him, didn't return home. Using his position as a senator, McCain would be behind the scenes quietly pushing and sponsoring federal laws that would keep the most damning information about our pals buried through classified documents. The secrets that John McCain has sought to hide about Vietnam pals are massive. Despite sworn testimony by two defense secretaries of the men left behind in Vietnam, McCain continued to push the massive lie that there were no survivors much to the horror of POW families who were frantic to know the truth about what happened to their loved ones. Enormous amounts of government documents indicate that hundreds of prisoners held in Vietnam were not returned when President Nixon signed the peace treaty in January of 1973. Only 591 in Hanoi were released, among them, Navy combat pilot John S. McCain. After the war, President Nixon promised the Vietnamese a $3.25 billion in post-war reconstruction aid without any political conditions. But there was a catch to this promise, where Nixon had included that Congress would have to approve these funds, approval that never happened. Furious that the American government had double-crossed them, Nanoy decided to keep the remaining hundreds of American prisoners, because their ransom money, post-war provisions, never came. CIA whistleblowers said that the government wanted to keep these missing men a secret, because as more years passed, it became more and more difficult for the government to admit that it knew about the prisoners that were left behind. Years later, CIA officials admitted that their intel indicated that the remaining POWs were eventually executed by the Vietnamese, as they were no longer useful bargaining chips. After the Pentagon's pal slash mia office was publicly shamed by internal whistleblowers that there were in fact still men in Vietnam being held as pals, the pressure from the families and Vietnam veterans finally forced the government in 1991 to create the Senate Select Committee on pal slash mia Affairs, to investigate these allegations. John Kerry was made chairman of the board, and McCain became its most pivotal member. In the end, this committee became part of the debunking machine, 
and McCain would become paramount to sweeping the entire atrocity of these forgotten pals under the rug. But what people don't know is John McCain's vital role in keeping this story about these abandoned pals hidden from the American public, as a traitor who completely turned his back on his brothers in arms who had remained in captivity by the Vietnamese. In the 1990s, legislation was proposed to Congress called the Truth Bill that would have provided complete transparency about these prisoners and missing men. But the Pentagon and McCain bitterly opposed the bill, and it went nowhere. People were predictably outraged over the bill being shot down, so in an effort for McCain and crooked Pentagon officials to cover their asses, the McCain bill, suddenly appeared several months later. This bill eventually became law in 1991, but would only create a bureaucratic maze, making the truth for the families completely impossible to discover. The provisions of the law explicitly states why the Pentagon and other agencies are justified for not releasing information about prisoners held in captivity. Later that year, the Senate Select Committee was created, and McCain and Kerry would work together to bury the last renaming evidence on the missing men. The American Conservative reported on the other ways McCain screwed over the PALS, by authoring a crippling amendment to the Missing Service Personnel Act that stripped away the obligations that commanders were previously held to have speedily searching for missing men and reporting these incidents to the Pentagon. The American conservative reported. McCain was also instrumental in amending the Missing Service Personnel Act, which had been strengthened in 1995 by PAL advocates to include criminal penalties, saying, any government official who knowingly and willfully withholds from the file of a missing person any information relating to the disappearance or whereabouts and status of a missing person shall be fined as provided in Title 18 or imprisoned not more than one year or both. A year later, in a closed House Senate conference on an unrelated military bill, McCain, at the behest of the Pentagon, attached a crippling amendment to the act, stripping out its only enforcement teeth, the criminal penalties and reducing the obligations of commanders in the field to speedily search for missing men and to report the incidents to the Pentagon. About the relaxation of PAL-MIA obligations on commanders in the field, a public McCain memo said, this transfers the bureaucracy involved out of the, battle, field to Washington. He wrote that the original legislation, if left intact, would accomplish nothing but create new jobs for lawyers and turn military commanders into clerks. McCain argued that keeping the criminal penalties would have made it impossible for the Pentagon to find staffers willing to work on pal slash mia matters. That's an odd argument to make. Were staffers only willing to work if they were allowed to conceal pal records? By eviscerating the law, McCain gave his stamp of approval to the government policy of debunking the existence of live pals. What's even more sick is how McCain demonized the two Pentagon chiefs' sworn testimonies who testified under oath about the men left behind, while insisting that all the evidence, to include documents, witnesses, satellite photos, be completely buried. He would go on to paint the entire story as an unpatriotic myth calling the testimony of anyone coming forward Vietnam's pals the bizarre rantings of the Mia hobbyists. To this day, McCain regularly vilifies those who try to get their hands on these classified documents, that he's worked for decades to conceal, as hoaxers, charlatans, conspiracy theorists, and dime store rambos. Ironically, the very same man who who for decades has been propped up and hailed a pal war hero and crusader for the interests of other pals, is the very same man responsible for their deaths. It's absolutely sick how this man despite his murdering and treasonous and crooked antics for decades, is to this day regarded as a hero in the minds of millions of Americans. It's finally time that we set the record straight on who John Songbird McCain truly is before he dies of brain cancer, and nauseating tributes are made about his patriotic service to our country.